Is it Dana? Dana. Whatever. Whatever. So today then we're going to do exponential decay function. So we got to figure out how we can decipher between the two. What makes it a growth function? What makes it a decay function? Well, that's pretty easy to figure out because if it's a growth function, that B value in that Y equals A times B to the X power function, that B value right there has to be bigger than 1. If it's a decay, then it's got to be between 0 and 1. Because remember, we had two conditions yesterday. First condition was A can't be 0 was our first condition. Second condition was B has to be a positive number not equal to 1. Okay? So B's got to be positive, not equal to 1. So it's got to be bigger than 1, that makes it a growth. Smaller than 1, makes it a decay. Okay. Let's put that to work. So, identify if the following functions are exponential growths or exponential decays. Well, you look at the B value. Is that B value, or what is this B value? B is 3. Is that bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? So that makes it a growth. Making it back there? Okay. Look at the B value. Is that bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? So that makes it a decay. Look at the B value. Bigger than 1, smaller than 1. So that makes it a... Get it? Come on, that's funny, Johnny, right there. I don't care who you are. Okay. Get it? DK. D K. D K. As in D K. Come on, come on, peeps. You guys gotta wake up, man. I'm dropping. Dropping stuff up here like it's going in a style. Looking at the B value. Bigger than one, smaller than one. Bigger than one. So it is a similarities today 
as there were yesterday. First similarity. Horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, unless we translate it. Okay? And then that will shift up or down. Okay? This function will get closer to the asymptote, which is the opposite of yesterday. Yesterday it grew away from the asymptote. Today it's going to grow or decay to the asymptote. Domain. All real numbers. Same as yesterday. In this case, the range is y is greater than 0. Now, we could also have a decay function <coughs> that looks like this. That's also a decay function because as I go left to right, it gets closer to the asymptote where now it's less than, y is less than zero. Okay? Or if we translate it, it could be y is greater than 18 or something along those lines. Okay? Same cool factoid as yesterday. Okay. All exponential functions, we'll go through those three points. We also added that point yesterday. That's still the same, because we're still talking So, let's graph this first one. Now, if you're out of graph paper, you can go get some more graph paper. If you don't want to get up and go get some more graph paper, you can just use your notebook. Okay? It, these don't have to be exact graphs, but if you want graph paper, it's over there. It's not pink anymore, it's white. One of the points we go through is 0, comma, a. One of the points we go through is 1, comma, a, b. One of the points we go through is 2, comma, a, b squared. One of the points we go through is negative 1, comma, a divided by b. Right? So it's like making a t-chart. If you forget those, you can always make yourself a t-chart. Okay, so, what's this one? 0, 3. What's this one? 9 fourths or 2 and 1 fourth? What's that one? Two comma one. Well, what's three fourths squared? Nine sixteenths times three. Twenty seven over twenty seven over sixteen. Which is a little less than two, right? What's this one? Four? Because dividing by a fraction, remember, is multiplying by the reciprocal. Yep. So three times four thirds is twelve thirds, which is four. What about my horizontal asymptote in this one? Horizontal asymptote. 
y equals 0. Domain range. Y is greater than zero. All right, so points that it goes through, 0, comma, A, 1, comma, A, B, 2, comma, A, B squared, negative 1, comma, A, divided by B. All right, so that's going to go through the point, 0, comma, 2, do we agree with that? Yes, this is going to go through the point 1, comma, 2 thirds. Do we agree with that one? Yes. Do we agree with the point 2, comma, 2 ninths? Yes. Do we agree with the point negative 1, comma, 6? Horizontal asymptote. Y equals zero. All right, then zero comma two, negative one comma six, two, oh, one comma two thirds, two comma two ninths. Domain. All real numbers. Range. Well, that's greater than zero. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shifts, translations, if you will. with H. So if it's minus 2, we actually shift it to the right 2. We actually add 2. Okay. K is going to move it up and down. Right? Okay. So if I were to graph This right here tells me that I'm going to move it to the right one, which means I'm going to add one to my x value. This right here tells me that I'm going to move it up three, which means I'm going to add three to my y value. What else gets shifted up three? My horizontal asymptote also gets shifted up three. Okay. So now I'm thinking here about before I shift them, I'm thinking about negative two to the one-fourth 
or times one fourth to the x power. And if I was thinking about that one, then I would do my zero comma a, one comma a b, two comma a b squared, negative one comma a divided by b. Right? So that would be zero comma negative two. Right? One comma negative one half. Two comma negative one eighth. Negative one comma negative eight. I apply my shifts. So I have to add 1 to my x values. So this becomes 1 comma something, 2 comma something, 3 comma something, and 0 comma something. Then I've got to add 3 to my y values. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative one half plus three is positive two and a half. Negative one eighth plus three is positive two point eight seven five. Negative eight plus three is negative five. And those then become the points that I plot. Domain, all real numbers, range. Today's real world application problems are going to be growth and decay models. Yesterday we talked about compound interest. Today we're going to talk about growth and decay models. How many, I don't know, can you, how many mosquitoes? How many, if you increase your, your productivity, making widgets, you know, whatever, okay? So A is going to be your initial value still. R is going to be your percentage. T is going to be time. The nice thing about this one is time is whatever it's in, okay? Time is whatever you want it to be. So if you're increasing, that's why this 1 plus r is on the increase, because I need this to be bigger than 1 if I'm going to grow. One minus r is going to be less than 1, between 1 and 0, if I'm going to decay or decrease, if you will. Okay? Now this is your B value. So you have to take that one out of the equation to figure out your percentage increase or your percentage decrease. Okay? What I mean by that is, like for instance on this one, my B value here is 3. 
agree with that? Well, 3 is 1 plus 2, right? And the reason I write it as 1 plus 2 is because it's 1 plus r. So that means 2 is the decimal form of my r. So if 2 is the decimal form of my r, what's the percentage that I am increasing? Hmm? No. I'm increasing by 200%. Okay. If it was 2%, then it would be 0 0.02 would, be, would have been my decimal. Okay, because so i got to move it. Now, to go, yesterday we learned that if we're going from percentage to decimal, we move it two spots to the right, right? No, two spots to the left. My right, your left. To go backwards, we move it two spots to the right. Okay? Alright? So this one, my B value is 0 0.925. Well, that's 1 minus 0 0.925. 0, 0.075, right? Do the math. 1 minus 0 0.075 is 90, 0.925. Okay? So that means that this is my R... So this is a 7.5% decrease because it's less than 1. You have to specify increase or decrease. Try the other two. I get a 60% decrease on that one. I get a 170% increase on that one. Yes, ma'am. I prefer the word increase and then word decrease. Okay. Or I N C R N D E C R. Okay. So, the number of mosquitoes at a lake are modeled by the equation m equals 1,000 times point, or 4.25 to the t power, where t is in days. Question A, how many mosquitoes are there at the initial count? How many? There's 1,000 at the initial count because that's our A value. What is the percent increase or decrease of mosquitoes? What do you got? 
325% increase. Is that what you were saying? Okay. Because my B value here is 4.25, which is 1 plus 3.25. And that 3.25 then is my R value. So this is a 325% increase in mosquitoes. Okay. Using some kind of calculating tool, calculate for me how many mosquitoes there are in 10 or on day 10. There's a lot of bugs, yes. So this would be 1,922,601,605 mosquitoes. Homework tonight is going to be another worksheet. It will be due tomorrow. <laughs>